Hi, I'm Catherine. And hi, I'm Gail. And we are honored to bring to you today Alice Matskin, an award-winning artist whose work fearlessly depicts women aging. Alice has two paintings in the permanent collection of the National Portrait Gallery of the Smithsonian. She's appeared on Oprah, has co-authored the dual award-winning book, The Art of Aging, Celebrating the Authentic Aging Self with Husband Richard, and is in Who's Who of American Art. Her commissioned portrait of Chelsea Clinton hung in the private quarters of the White House during the Clinton years and now hangs in their bedroom. You can learn more about Alice and Richard by visiting their website at The Matskins, T-H-E-M-A-T-Z-K-I-N-S dot com. The Art of Aging is available at Amazon. So Alice, welcome to Women Over 70 Aging Reimagined. When I saw you on Saging International's program, I knew we had to share you with our community. So thank you very much for being here. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. I feel honored to be here with all you great, beautiful women. <laughs> thank you. So, so let's start out by asking you, what, what inspired you to paint women over 70 who are living their lives in ways you hope to live yours? Well, I was I was about 58 years old and I looked in the mirror and all of a sudden I, I actually realized I was getting older and I started freaking out, you know, and I started just feeling afraid of things. And I, I would, I was started seeing everything dying. I'd look outside and the trees were dying and I'd look outside and the flowers were dying and everything was dying around me. And every time I get like a little twinge in my body, I go, is this the moment? Is this it? You know, I'm getting old and all. And I was just like freaking out. And I thought, this is not normal <laughs> to do this because die, death and dying and things leaving are part of nature and and it, we, have, we have to accept that and i thought i have to look for the positive side of growing older otherwise i'm going to go crazy so um i decided i was going to use my art instead of a psychiatrist to go to go through the process good idea <laughs> so, yeah it was a really good idea and yeah. then and so um with my darling husband Richard, who's sitting right over here next to me, um, and I, um, we embarked upon a quest and my, to meet women over seventy. That was my thought. I thought, well, seventy is kind of a turning point between middle age and old age. You're kind of entering the doorway when you're seventy, and um, and so I thought I'm going to look for women seventy years and older who are living their life the way I'd like to live mine. People who are being creative and and very functional and, and, you know, just offering a lot to society. And it was easy to find people because there's so many fabulous old women uh, around. And and, um, and we when I looked in newspapers, I asked friends, you know, and just different ways it, it happened. And so I decided I'm gonna, I'm gonna interview these women and I'm gonna ask them what makes life worthwhile and what's it like to be an older person. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened. So that's when I, that's, that's when it all started happening. <laughs> you've, and, uh, you've really spoken about the mission mm -hmm. of our, our podcast and our program. It's exactly over 70 aging reimagined, right? Yeah. And when I listen to some of the interviews that you guys have done, you know, on your podcast, it just, it's so beautiful. It's exactly the same quest mm -hmm. because we don't have to dry up and blow away when we get old. We can just keep going until we just die. <laughs> <laughs> that's absolutely as right as long as we're healthy and you know everything else like that why not yeah right right also we've gathered some wisdom over the years you know so that that's helpful yes yes and let's showcase it yeah exactly <laughs> so so you've done several different projects associated with women and aging and uh, do you want to share a few of your paintings and tell us something about the women you painted and what you learned from the experience I would love to do that. Now I'm going to go on here. Okay. Let, me share, let me share the screen here. Please do. Okay. And I'm going to choose my file here. And then I'm going to um, put share the PowerPoint here. Okay. Oh, this, oh, this, this, is actually, this is actually the cover of, of our book, The Art of Aging, Celebrating the Authentic Aging Self that Richard and I ended up creating. It was funny because when we started this quest around aging, we were we were just starting a quest around aging. And of course, every artist likes to have a subject matter to paint. And and, uh, and so it was a beautiful thing to do. And we ended up doing a book way after the fact. 
Mm-hmm. And it actually won two awards. And this this is this is Beatrice Wood. She was a neighbor of ours, and she was also a, a, a pretty famous potter and a woman who dared to be herself. And this is her 105 years old. This was nine days before she died. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, she was an amazing person. And this actually, I took a photograph of her that this picture came from. It was at a party that was being given to her, and she was sitting there, you know, on a chair, and just like hundreds of people were there lined up just to pay tribute to her. And they, and she was a beautiful person. Can I ask you, Alice, how did you how did you pick the wording celebrate celebrating the authentic aging self? What, what is it you're thinking about? <laughs> <laughs> well, it just it, it's like. It, it, it's it's like just we're aging. It, I, I don't know how I picked it up. It just sounded right to me. You know, it's the authentic, just to be authentic as an aging person, mm-hmm. just to be who you are, and not to fight with the lines and the wrinkles and the, and all the other stuff. But just this is what's happening, and this is this is what it is. So it's like self to celebrate the authentic aging self rather than try to run away from it or pretend it's not existing or try to hide it. You know, because you know the, the only solution to not getting old is to die. <laughs> <laughs> we don't like that. <laughs> it's a bad plan. <laughs> but, but it is the plan. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's see. Let's see. Go to the next one here. And let's see. Oh, this, this is actually another picture of me with Beatrice Wood. This is the painting that's in the National Portrait Gallery. This one of her. And this is her at 100 years old. Oh. And uh, I had brought the painting over to show her the painting. And that's me at 54 here. <laughs> and uh, I actually had done that painting earlier, and here's me with Beatrice. And the most amazing thing about Beatrice was when she was 103, we were talking, and she said to me, she says, you know, I'm 103 years old, and I've never been happier in my life. And I thought that was just so, I mean, it never, it never left me that she said that. And also another thing was that I got to sit in her studio with her while she threw pot after pot after pot at 100 years old. and. And I realized that the well of creativity ne- never runs dry. And that, you know, sometimes you have moments where, you know, you don't feel like you're being creative or something like that happens. But it, oh, usually you're just gestating at that point and, mm-hmm. and the creativity never leaves. It's still there. And so she was a potter? She was a potter. She was a poet. She was a writer. She did these famous glazes. I mean, in the early 1900s, when she was a young woman, there was the Dada group of artists. They were kind of esoteric, avant-garde people, and they called her the Mama of Dada. And and she actually and, and she actually got into really got into her art when she was in her 40s. She took a class at Hollywood High School uh, in ceramics, and that got her off. But she she would do these outrageous things, and she'd do beautiful glazes, and she didn't. She just dared to be herself. She didn't care what anybody thought. She didn't care if she ever sold anything. Mm-hmm. She didn't care about any of it. But she ended up being famous in spite of herself because she was, <laughs> she was an authentic aging person, and she uh, was a very generous human being, and she was just a real role model for me and for a lot of people of of aging gracefully, mm-hmm. and um, and. She was just very generous. She was just natural. At, at her, when she died, there was a there was a um, a, a, a ceremony for her, and we all, everybody in the community, there were hundreds of people in this giant tent. It was a real quiet, warm day, you know. We were doing this music, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this wind went shh, swept through the tent. The whole tent started shaking, and everybody started laughing because we thought, "Well, she's here, can't keep her away," you know. <laughs> Well, she was a wonderful person, and so she was just one of the wonderful people that I painted. I could have been, I could be painting old women for the rest of my life, and 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 the rest of if, if I lived to be a thousand years, I wouldn't have enough of them. Let's see, what, let's see what's coming up. Oh, went backwards here. Ah, let's see what's coming up. Oh, this is the, this is a close up of that the painting that I was showing her. And this is a woman called Publica Velarde. We were in we were in Albuquerque, and um, we heard that uh, I mean, we actually we were in the museum down there, and we, we read about her. And she was a Pueblo Indian artist who was um, uh, a, a painter rather than a a, a potter. Mm-hmm. And so we just called her, and out of nowhere, and she invited us in, and we we it was just wonderful to, to connect with her. A beautiful, beautiful person. And she wrote some wonderful books, and she defied her, her, her 
for people by doing becoming a um, painter. But when she got famous, they all were very happy. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, she was really a, a wonderful person. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and this is Betty Friedan, oh. who is the mother of uh, the feminist movement. And this is her at 75 years old. This one is in the National Portrait Gallery at the moment. It's been in there hanging in an exhibit called Search for Justice, which has been, is a permanent exhibit that's been in there, which kind of blows my mind. We went to visit it in the National Portrait Gallery. And I walked into this room with all these paintings and and, and I, I, I said, oh, that one looks familiar over there. And I realized it's my painting that I'd done. Very, and I it was just so... It was so off the wall to see that my painting, my painting that I did in three and a half hours, this painting uh, oh my. Uh, was hanging in the National Portrait Gallery. And and uh, oh. she was she was a, an amazing person, too. I mean, she was a, here. She's at 75 and she she never she never stopped being an advocate for women. And she was just so uh, she was a powerful person and uh, was very, you know, I, I was very blessed to meet her, and um, and it just it was just fantastic. You know, I don't know what else to say about that. We were just happened to be in Washington, going to see Beatrice Wood, and in the Smithsonian, which that is that that's a whole story in itself. Getting in the Smithsonian, it will tell us. I'll tell you. Okay, so um, I was teaching a class in in uh, in, in my studio at home, and. Um, and I was painting that picture of Beatrice Wood that I just showed you working on the potter's wheel. And one of my students said, you know, you want to submit to that to the National Portrait Gallery. And I said, OK. <laughs> <laughs> so I went, and I didn't even think about it. You know, and I went to my computer and I started, you know, typing away. And I was writing this letter and Richard comes in. And he says, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm going to send the painting of, of um, Beatrice Wood to the National Portrait Gallery. And he started laughing. <laughs> And I said, well, you know, I, there's nothing to lose, a stamp, an envelope, a letter. Right, I'll send it. Right. And then about, and then about um, a week later, or two weeks later, it probably was, um, I was in the studio with my class. We were all there. And the phone rang. And I pick it up. And I say, hi. And she says, oh, hello. This is Brandon Fortune. I'm the, I'm the uh, curator of the National Portrait Gallery. And we, we love your painting of of." of Beatrice Wood, and we, we'd like to see it in person. And, and and I'm having this phone conversation. Everybody's picking up my energy because I probably was exploding, you know, <laughs> standing there. And and all of a sudden, Richard comes in from the back 40 somewhere. He was outside. All of a sudden, he's in the room. He must have felt the energy. And and I hung up the phone. I just screamed on top of my lungs. Ah! Like I, was, I couldn't believe it. And so they bought it. They bought that one. And uh, oh, so that's how I, I ended up in the Smithsonian, which was <laughs> How, totally do you, how do you price a painting for the Smithsonian? Um, I don't know. <laughs> you just say a number and you they pay it. You know? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I didn't charge a lot of money. I would have given it to them. I was surprised they even asked me how much it was. It right. didn't really matter to me. Right. I mean, I've never been in art for the money. And uh, if I've sold something, it's been just something miraculous, or it's nice that it happens. And but I don't really. I'm just. I paint because I love to paint. And I can't help myself, which is the right thing. Mm. Anyway, this is this is happy, lucky, fun, and uh, she her name that wasn't her real name, but she changed it because she said she was happy most of the time, lucky because she met and married the love of her life, and fun because she found out she was graceful. And when she was uh, she was she's eighty one years she's eighty one years old here, and she, this is no joke the way she's her posture is. No. I, mean, I didn't. I didn't exaggerate anything. I didn't change anything, but she was she was very depressed at one point, and she was very overweight. And she went to a um, a a yoga class, and she found out that she was graceful, and 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 she found out she was flexible, and 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 she she mm. started taking dance classes and clown classes and comic classes, and then she and her husband would go to all the convalescent homes around, and they would uh, oh. entertain oh. people. And so she was just she and she was just she was she was just a, a light bulb, a beautiful person, and I was very 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 um, very blessed to meet her. And I don't I don't see what else I have here. Oh, I go into my let me let me go back here. Okay, happy lucky song because you were talking about there are actually there are actually um, 
15 paintings that go along with this, this particular collection of, um, of, 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 this, of these women. Uh, but, but through these women, I learned that, that um, you know, my lines and wrinkles and sagging skin is part of the aging, that I can be creative as long as I live. That um, you know, and these women, none of them were afraid of dying either, which was pretty amazing because they were living fulfilled lives, and so they just felt they they just felt comfortable and at home with being an older person. Mm-hmm. And so after I finished doing that project, which you know I'll never finish it, but after I finished this particular group of paintings, I realized well now so I feel good about myself as an aging person, but then now what do I do about this body with it? My breasts are hanging to the floor, you know, and and. Um, <laughs> And, and I haven't, I haven't, you know, most women feel really bad about their bodies. And um, it's crazy because, you know, our body is our vehicle of transportation and it's our home to our mind and our, our, our mind and our spirit, you know, and it's, it's, it's this, this, this miraculous machine that we live in. That it, this is just such a miracle the way it functions without us doing anything. We get up in the morning and, and we get up and we're alive and it's just unbelievable and we're just blessed to have a body so I decided I was going to explore that more uh, and so I decided I was going to ask women um, I, I was 58 at the time so I figured 58 and, and or older you know um, about you know to pose naked for me and to let me do a painting of them mm. So this, so this was one of the first ones and her name is Phyllis and it just blew me away she saw I guess she saw an article about our book in, 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 in somewhere. And she called me because she wanted to know if I was interested. She had a friend that I thought she thought I might be interested in. And I said, well, I'm starting to paint Nick and older women. And, um, and she said, well, I'd be interested in doing that. She said, I've had a mastectomy, but you probably wouldn't want anybody with a mastectomy. And I said, I'm mm-hmm. serious. Uh, I mean, the fact that you would give your, you know, your body and your, your, your mm-hmm. cancer the face is so touching. And so I went to her house and she had gone to the, you know, to the to beauty shop and she had her makeup done and she was, and she was wearing, you know, this necklace and she's like totally regal, totally regal mm-hmm. in her naked body and her nakedness is, is just, to me, it's just touching. It's very, very touching and it's real. And, and, um, and she was, a, and she on top of it was a very special person and, and, um, and, and she actually ended up a few years, a couple of years later, getting cancer in the other breast, and she did pass away from, from breast cancer ultimately. But uh, it was it was such an honor to, to meet her, and um, and also you know it, it, it it's it, it's true, it's real, you know, right, it's real. right, and, and such courage, and such courage, uh, unbelievable courage. And she was she was courageous in a lot of ways, but really courageous showing showing her naked body. Mm. And, and this is this is Muriel, and she was she's um, a dear friend, and and she used to live across the street from me when I first moved into uh, to my first home when I when, in my first marriage, and she was a queen, but she wasn't a queen because she was a phony queen. She just was a queen, you mm. know, and it was mm. her natural habitat, and the most authentic person you could meet. And so I thought, well, and I, and I had already painted 11, and we wanted to do a calendar. So I thought, well, she, I'll ask Muriel, but she'll never say yes, you know. <laughs> so I said to her, hey, Muriel, I, how, would you like to paint, you know, pose naked for me and for this calendar that we're doing? And she said, absolutely, as long as I can be Miss January. <laughs> so she, so, and, and she was very courageous because here she is with her sagging breasts, of course, no hair in her body, scoliosis of the spine. And 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 just proud and 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 proud to have the body and and to show her body and it was like it's beautiful it's so beautiful I mean why is it why is it that people only get it if if you're young and you have you know firm little boobs you know and you know you have a tiny little body and you're a size three that you're beautiful but that's not how it works you know I mean it's just your body is your body how and old was she there. She she was uh, eighty one there. I think I, I forgot. I think she was eighty one in that one in that uh-huh. picture. Yeah. Uh-huh. Wow. And, and then um, so this was me. Okay. So then when I was I was painting, I was painting all these naked women. I'm thinking, well, I I got to do it now. God, oh my God. You know. 
<laughs> so I was I was actually working on this self portrait of myself. I was fifty eight, and um, and uh, I thought, well, and I I had a shirt on it, you know. So I, being paint, I can just paint it off, you know. So I painted off my shirt, and there I, I managed to get a breast out there, you know, in the world, and that's all I could do at that point. And then a few years later, like when I was sixty five. I was sitting in my studio. I was sitting in my studio, and I, I, uh, I thought, well, you know, I am asking all these women to pose naked, and, and am I, am I in touch enough with my body to show it, to, to show my body? And it's, I mean, it's not that I'm a nudist. I'm not the kind of person who just rips off their clothes. <laughs> I'm kind of modest, actually, uh, but um, this was just something else. And so I did. I paint. This is a six foot painting. It's a life-size painting. I'm not wearing any makeup. I've got my hair up, uh, I, and I'm just. I, it was funny because the night before, the night before I started this painting, I said to Richard, "I'm ready to do a painting of myself." And so I said, "Come in the studio and take some photographs for me." And so oh, I set it up. It was night, and I had dark, and I had all this, you know, this kind of like beautiful light and mm -hmm. and uh and and i you know posed myself standing at a canvas you know like painting a painting and and um and then i, I said okay afterwards and i went to my <laughs> to my camera afterwards to look at them and they disappeared they're gone they were they, oh. the, the phone something ate them but <laughs> i wasn't supposed to do those i guess i went okay well i guess i i can't do that oh, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> so, so I ended up just painting this picture of me just just being me, you know, mm -hmm. with one breast longer than the other, you know, and and uh, and it was funny because a couple of days later I was doing a, a talk. Um, there was this group called Focus on the Masters, and this woman in Ventura documents a lot of the Ventura artists, people in Ventura County, mm -hmm. and so I was honored to be one of them. And so I had just finished the painting and I stuck it at the door as people were walking in. I thought. Well, that'll test and see how I really feel about people looking at my naked body. But the truth was, I I don't feel funny about it at all. You know, I mean, I, that, that's that's how I was at sixty five. And and somebody said, well, why did you, why didn't you, why did you make the other breast longer than the other? And I thought, well, uh, well, because um, that's the way it is. And I, I had no desire to change it to, to mm -hmm. alter it, to try to make it something that it really wasn't. I love the sunburn. Yeah, I got my son. <laughs> but you know what I also love is like your stomach. Yes. You <laughs> capture, <laughs> you capture just the little rolls in your stomach. Yeah. And and uh and just the way you're standing there, it, it's so beautiful, Alice. Thank you. I even put a few of my varicose veins in the, in the I leg. See that, yes. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I didn't try to to mask anything. You know, there was no reason to do that. And um, I mean, it's part of the aging, and it's it. There's a beauty to it because you know, every day, of course, we've been aging since the day we were born, and um, and and it, it's just kind of fascinating to watch the body change like that. You know, and it's yours. I mean, sometimes I walk by the mirror, you know, especially in the morning. You know, I look in the mirror, and I go, "Hit it with a stick like this." <laughs> But then I laugh because it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's just beautiful. We're, we're I'm alive, you know. And, oh, it's, it's and, and what comes from within you is beautiful, and that's what makes you beautiful, and that's what makes all these women beautiful. Absolutely, their inner spirit is so gorgeous. The the way they care about their lives and the lives of others and all. I just I'm just so taken by it. Well, it's it's one of the women. Um, Told me, you know, there's every age has got its own beauty, and and it is it is not so much about the surface. It's a, it is a, exactly what you say. It's a, it's about the light that shines through you. Mm -hmm. um, because you know, I mean, I can remember, you know, I mean, I mean, remember yeah, a lot of things, but a lot of people who are the most beautiful people, quote, beautiful people in the world, can also be the ugliest people in the world. Where their energy and their spirit is mean spirited, you know, but. Mm -hmm. Um, these women were all all had so much tremendous light, and and it's exactly right what you're saying. Is that that's the most important thing, much more important than the surface. Right. So did did you have more paintings to share with us? Oh, I have more paintings, yeah. Okay. But so, so after <laughs> we're up there time, yes. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. I forgot to hit the start button, so I have no idea where we're at. Anyway, <laughs> well, we have a few more minutes, so let's. Okay. let's and so then, so then, um, after I did the women, I thought, well, oh, this is great. So now I know that you know, accept my body, accept um, my rot lines and wrinkles, sagging skin. Know I can be, you know, a productive human being. But now, what about dying? What do we do about dying? We have to really look at it. So, mm -hmm. I, I. Um, had Richard's my my husband Richard's aunt Kitty, and she this she's at, at uh, eighty nine right here. We got her up on a horse, and she was one of the those women you can see with a lot of light in her, who was absolutely gorgeous mm -hmm. in every way. And um and she was the kind of person that really had no problem getting older. And as she changed, she just accepted every moment of her of her of her mm -hmm. losing you know losing her body basically mm -hmm. and so this was the first and i did a series of paintings of her i didn't even realize it was a series but because i used to i loved her and i loved i loved the way she looked and i loved painting her so i just did all these paintings of her you know mm -hmm. and so i'll show you a few and so this was her at 94 mm. and um and and she was just I mean, she was still, she was still in a funny way, kind of still a live wire in a certain kind of way, but another way she had gone very, very inward and, and, uh, and, and introspective about things and, and just very accepting of everything. And, you know, she, she would always say time marches on. I can just hear her saying time marches on. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and this was here, her on her deathbed. Uh -huh. and, um, this was this was probably a few hours before she died. We had brought her up. To, she lived up down in L.A. and we were up in Ojai and uh, we were very close with her. She had no children. So we were like her children, you know, mm -hmm. so we brought her up and put her into a, a home close to us so we could be there for her when she was we got into not, you know, into this place where she really was at, at, at the last of her days. And she was 97 years old here. Mm. It's so amazing. Uh, we came into the room, uh, and she was in this state of 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 death. You know, where those last hours, where people are just kind of like in a coma state. Mm. And we we walked up and we bent over her um, her bed, where we had our hands kind of like up on the railing. We bent over her bed and to 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 tell her we loved her, and without changing that look on her face, without moving anything but her hands she lifted up her hands and she grabbed both of our hands oh. and it was just the most fantastic experience because she saw us she knew we were there you know what i mean and she was she was she she i don't know you know <laughs> the, mis <laughs> the mystery right it's the mystery. right well they say that you that, that people can hear you up until the moment of their death yeah, and maybe even after their death, I don't know. I mean, That's at least until the moment possible. of their death, for sure, because because she was there, and she never she never changed that expression on her face when she put her hands on us. Nothing, and she was there. And a few hours later, she just floated away. She floated out peacefully, mm -hmm. and she she lived her life peacefully, and she lived her life with a lot of acceptance and surrender to the what is of things. And and uh, and that's what made her a very powerful person. That she just kind of cruised along, and she, you know, she had she didn't have any fear of it, and it was beautiful, really beautiful. Right, right. So maybe one more. Let's see. Okay, this is. Then we went into parents. This is Richards and Richard because suddenly you know we were getting older, and our parents were certainly getting older, and and. Um, and this is Richard's mom and dad. And actually, she really died while I was doing this painting. Um, and uh, and and they were a loving couple. They were a very loving couple. And um, and uh, he died about six months after she did. And they were very close. And now they're wherever they are together. Mm. But it was interesting suddenly being our parents' parents. Right. And it was it was it was very it was really a blessing that we had that experience. Mm. And this is my mom, and this was the day before she died. And she had been a very vibrant person. And we walked around the property that day, and she just um, you can see the kind of the state that she was in. And and she too was one of these people that was completely accepting of her death. Mm. And um, 
she wasn't afraid. She told me that day, she said, you know, I'm not afraid to die. She said, I have a curiosity about life, but I'm not afraid to die. Mm. Wow. And then this is her on her deathbed, and that was the next day. And um, she'd gotten so small that if she, you know, you could see where her legs are. Uh, if she'd lived any longer, she would have been two feet tall. She kept shrinking. Oh. <laughs> but she, she was very, 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 very peaceful. And she was very, very accepting. And it was just, it was such a gift to be present in that moment with her. And I was happy for her because she died with her car keys in her, in her purse and her high heels in the closet. And she would, if she had, if she had um, lived any longer, she would have been mm. disabled. Like, and she would not have been happy. So I was happy for her when she died. I miss her, but I'm happy for her too. Yeah. So Catherine, did you have questions for Alice? Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm so moved by all of these paintings that. Um, wow. I, I I don't have any questions. I'm I just want thank you so much, Alice, for sharing these with us. I've just it's, um, all of them, but the. The, about women showing their bodies, I just think that is so incredibly powerful mm -hmm. because um, it, it is just the big topic of conversation among so many of us as we age. And then the, you know, the culture is always comparing us to youth. That's the standard. And yeah. it's just to be able to, to, you just, you said such wonderful things that there's a beauty to aging and, mm -hmm. and our bodies show it. And, um, that we, you know, love our bodies as we love ourselves. So, exactly. I just, it's just, this is gorgeous, wonderful. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't thank be you here enough. without our bodies. Pardon? I said we wouldn't be here without our bodies. We would not be here. Truly. <laughs> so, are you consider continuing to paint older people, or or what? Look, I, I yes, but what happened recently was, oh yes, I I'll always continue to paint older people and people. I love painting portraits and people. But I, one day I was, it was, it was, you know, COVID had been on and everybody was kind of inside. And I was kind of walking around the house, spending a lot of time cleaning the house. And it never got clean. You know how you do that. You keep cleaning and it keeps getting dirty and you keep cleaning. Right. And, then, and so my mind was going like, oh, God, I'm not doing anything creative. I hadn't painted in about a year. And I didn't even realize that happened, you know. And then I heard a voice that said, and I said, you know, I, I, my mind was like that, that 58-year-old mind was going crazy, you know. And something said to me, go in the studio and um, take out whatever you want to do. Don't worry about what you're going to paint. Just go in there and draw, do something. So I put mop down <laughs> and, I, and I went into my studio and I pulled out my, my pastel paints and my pastels, which I hadn't used for years. And I found a piece of um uh, black paper. Oh, and I must preface this to say that um, there was a big fire up in Ojai a couple of years ago, about three years ago, mm -hmm. and all my paintings burned. Just about every one of these paintings burned. I just mm -hmm. had a few of them left, and so I had a piece of I had a piece of paper left, and so I went in and I started drawing. And I, I what came out of me was very shocking, <laughs> but I'll show it to you what it is. Okay, that was the first one. Don't ask me what it is. I have no idea. What it is. It's just some kind of energy that goes on. And then this is another one. I mean, they're just weird. They're totally weird. I have no idea where they're coming from. And then this is a painting that I just, this is a six foot painting. I have no idea what it is. But what it is, is, is bliss. It is, is a state of bliss in doing them, of moving the color around and, and, um, mm -hmm. and uh, not worrying about anything and, and and not worrying about what people think it doesn't really matter what anybody thinks about anything and it, it just reminds me of, of Beatrice Wood you know of, of her you know my my realization that the well of creativity never runs dry mm -hmm. and you know I mean people walk into the studio and look at these things and some of them can't say anything they went either they want to run out screaming I don't know what they want to do but but what it is it doesn't matter to me it is blissful and I haven't stopped painting people. I love painting people, and I love painting. And it's it's just been a, it's just been a, a wonderful gift that I've, I've been given. Right, right. Oh. Okay. That's I feel like we've been blessed. A wonderful gift that you're sharing with us, Alice. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for inviting me. Thank I you. feel so honored to be part of this uh, part of this this group because now I'm 82 years old. 
and um, and um, I'm almost 83. And so I, all the women, every one of the women that I painted uh, in that in that series is is gone. Yeah. Wow. And so here I here I stand, you know, next in line. Well, we hope you'll join our community. We would certainly love to have you be a part of it. We would. Yes. Thank you so well, much, Alice. Thank you so much for inviting me. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you.